Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen uh, at the Rai Europe. This is Sascha Krause Tünker from Next to Sun from Germany. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not uh, able to be in New Delhi at this time, but I'm very happy to get the chance to uh, introduce you to our agri photovoltaic system um, via video conference. Um, I will I'm going to show you some slides about our system and its application and I'm quite interested in the discussion with you about uh, potential application in India. So let's get started. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about our quite young experience with our system since it's new developed and uh, of course the experience is only um, uh, as long as the system exists which is about uh, one and a half years approximately in a, a bigger plant um, first i want to show you the system which is uh, quite different from what you might already know i wanted to introduce you the uh, electricity production advantages as well as uh, the advantages for agriculture we see in the system and uh, at the end i wanted to show you a special application um, which is called solar fans so first the introduction into our system our concept um, which is quite different from what you uh, might already know um, Normal agriculture, agro uh, PV uh, systems, uh, yeah, have uh, some kind of uh, roof above the um, um, agricultural ground. Um, our system instead is uh, with uh, vertical mounting um, and uh, some space between the rows of, uh, let's say, eight to twenty meters for the agricultural use. Here you see uh, our plant in uh, southwest of Germany, um, where the row space is about 10 meters. Um, we need more than eight meters uh, due to shadowing reasons to avoid shadowing, uh, lowering the um, electricity production. And in this plant, we have 10 meters. And you can see that um, the tractor with the mowing system, which has an uh, size of uh, approximately nine meters uh, fits in between and is able to work in between uh, quite efficiently. Our system only takes a very small um, space in the, in the um, whole um, plant. So there's a lot of space left for agricultural production. Let's uh, have a look at the electricity production, which is also interesting since there are some advantages uh, compared to other systems uh, you already know. First, let's talk about the production volume. Um, since uh, surprisingly for us as well, it's uh, more than uh, you would expect from an. Um, we have. Uh, around 10 to 15 percent uh, additional um, production uh, compared to a uh, south orientated plant with uh, monofacial models um, we uh, understand now why uh, it's even higher since um, especially in midsummer a uh, conventional plant loses some production uh, due to um, the point that the sun is even in the especially in the morning and the evening hours behind the modules and you have no production at all uh, that's uh, something we avoid since we especially have uh, high production in the morning and the evening hours the second um, effect which uh, increases our production is the albedo effect um, especially for example at noon uh, we should not see um, any production from direct irradiation, but still due, only to, due to reflection, we see about 20% uh, of um, photovoltaic production also at that time. The second point is uh, a production profile. Um, 
if we are uh, looking about uh, uh, we are looking at uh, conventional systems we see an increase of production in the morning hours a peak at noon and uh, decrease in the uh, afternoon our system instead has two peaks, one in the morning and one in the evening, and uh, um, decrease during the uh, mid, uh, midday. Um, this uh, on a, has also on a standalone basis an advantage since it's nearer to the um, uh, electricity demand during the day. But I think uh, more interesting is the combination of both systems, since uh, if you combine both together uh, on a, let's say, one-to-one -one basis, uh, you get a quite um, a stable production curve with a uh, uh, yeah, high increase in the morning hours, a stable production during the day, and um, um, yeah, a decrease uh, at the later evening. And uh, so our production, um, our system is able to uh, stabilize the uh, um, renewable energy production and bring it nearer to the electricity demand, which I think is a great advantage. Um, here we have some experiences from Germany, um, where we also see some, uh, yeah, uh, also some uh, um, effect in uh, the prices. Uh, yeah, in Germany, we have uh, some 40 gigawatts already installed, mainly with uh, south orientation, and uh, which leads to uh, at sunny summer days, we have a high production at noon from the conventional uh, PV plants which already um, decreases the prices at noon, even below zero, we have to say. So um, we have a spot market curve, which is uh, high in the morning and the evening hours and goes down um, at noon. Yeah, and, um, if you, and as you can see, it fits very well to our uh, production curve, since our production curve follows the spot market price with the high production in the morning and the evening hours when the price is high. On average, we saw from our system so far uh, uh, market price um, about uh, 0.3 uh, cents higher uh, per kilowatt hour than uh, the average market price of solar power in Germany. So due to this um, outperformance and uh, from the uh, volume as well as uh, the price side, we get some additional um, revenues of uh, 20 to 25 percent. Um, as you also uh, saw when you uh, look at the system, uh, it's not very complicated to build. It's uh, not that uh, difficult like uh, building a roof or something like that. So um, uh, overall, we expect, uh, or we already have seen a difference in um, the price for building such a plant is on average, uh, let's say around 20% with uh, due to um, compared to a conventional PV plant with a south orientation. Uh, this 20% additional cost already include um, the bifacial modules uh, instead of the uh, monofacial ones, as well as uh, some more effort um, we need uh, to mount the system. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this um, uh, additional price for the system is already covered by the additional revenues. So we are completely competitive and the advantage of using our um, the, um, field uh, for agriculture um, is um, without any additional costs. So let's move forward to the agricultural perspective. What uh, is our advantage there? Um, 
Of course, our system offers a wide range of ecological and agricultural uses. Um, we can do, of course, conventional agriculture, as you already have seen. Livestock farming is also not a problem. We already tried um, and uh, no problem was at all. Uh, organic farming should be an alternative um, as well as um, some ecological enhancements, uh, for example, through extensification or um, uh, in the row spacing between. Um, the potential crops uh, we could imagine for the production in between is, for example, of course, potatoes or carrots or different types of beets, but also low growing cereals and rice, but with a restriction only up to 75 centimeters. The um, lower um, a row of modules is mounted around a meter above the ground. So, of course, we do not want to have uh, some shadowing effects um, due to the crops uh, in the summertime. And uh, that's the reason why it should not be higher than 75 uh, centimeter, uh, centimeters. But, uh, yeah, um, as far as I know, there are uh, different uh, kinds of cereals and rice as well. Um, which uh, do not grow higher than uh, 75 centimeters and are uh, able to be uh, combined with our system. Another positive, uh, uh, possible advantage we see is uh, reduction of wind erosion um, due to the north-south arrangement of the modules. Um, they counteract especially east and west winds. And if we are talking about northern Germany, but also uh, parts uh, of India as well, as far as I know. Uh, we have a main uh, west wind direction, um, which uh, of course causes ex um, erosion. And um, if we have our uh, module rows in between, they uh, break the wind and decrease the wind speed at the ground and also uh, lower the evaporation due to um, Yes, a redu reduction in wind exposition. Um, that should also help to keep um, um, the ground um, stable. Yeah. Another possi possible advantage is uh, support of biodiversity. Uh, for example, by flower stripes under the modules. Yeah? So uh, as I already showed in the first picture, we have, uh, let's say, if we have a row space uh, of 10 meters, we would have around 9 meters for agricultural use and uh, a meter um, more or less um, left directly under the modules, uh, a little bit left and right, um, which could also be used, for example, for flower stripes to um, um, uh, also protect against erosion and which could be an uh, interesting uh, habitat for uh, a different kind of uh, flora and fauna um, to increase the biodiversity. Uh, furthermore, we have a, a special application I wanted to show you now, which is, um, yes, a, a product we um, yeah, built out of our system. Uh, it's a solar fence. Yeah. Here we have a picture, um, and it's a combination of our uh, vertical PV, PV production system, only with one row normally, um, which is also used as a fence. Um, and um, yeah, we have a great flexibility um, uh, to for the um, kind of fence we would mount. Uh, below our uh, modules, uh, for example, wire mesh, bar grill, or also even for personal purposes, uh, privacy panel, um, to um, use it as a fencing. Here we have a picture from our first installation in Austria, uh, where we have this combination of fencing and electricity production 
And as you see, we also have an additional advantage, uh, which is a shadow for the livestock. Yeah? You see all this chicken here um, are obviously quite happy about the um, uh, shadow uh, from the modules and are more or less all in a place where um, they have the shadow. So this is, um, yeah, our um, system I wanted to introduce you and um, I'm quite happy uh, to discuss the advantages and maybe disadvantages and possible applications in uh, India with you. Thanks a lot for your attention and um, looking forward to our discussion.